Yes. Lord Hughes will give the judgment to the court. The appellant <coughs> was tried for a paramilitary shooting in Northern Ireland committed many years ago. He had been shot in the process because his victim returned fire, and so he had been rushed to hospital. He then escaped from the hospital and left the country. Thus it was that his trial was nearly 30 years after the event. There was a good deal of evidence that it was uh, him who had fired the shot. Uh, he had an identifying tattoo, and the bullet which was recovered from inside him matched the gun of his uh, opponent. Uh, there has been no appeal against his conviction for the shooting. However, he was also charged with membership of a prescribed paramilitary organization. The evidence in support of that charge included, importantly, a personal history of his own life, which made it clear that in the past he had been a committed member. That history had been part of documents which he had himself submitted to the authorities in Sweden two years or so after the shooting when he made an application there for asylum. The asylum application was refused and years later when he was arrested, the prosecution in Northern Ireland obtained the papers from the Swedish authorities. So the argument in the case before this court was about whether those documents submitted in support of an asylum application can be used in evidence or are confidential and thus inadmissible. Like the courts below, this court rules that the evidence was admissible and properly used at his trial. Lord Kerr gives the unanimous judgment of the court. Uh, essentially, the obligation of authorities which receive an asylum claim is not to disclose information in it to persecutors in the applicant's home state and not to disclose it to the home state at all while it is being considered and decided upon. But neither of those situations applied here. Once the appellant's asylum application had been refused, there was no reason why the information which he had given should remain confidential. That is the effect uh, of both domestic law and the, relative, the relevant uh, European Union directive. Uh, there was a second argument advanced for the appellant that disclosure of the application documents infringed his right not to incriminate himself. That was wrong because he hadn't been under any compulsion when he gave his account of himself in Sweden. On the contrary, he'd given it quite voluntarily in the hope of persuading that country to grant him asylum. Moreover, at the time, he had been advised of the then Swedish rule that documents submitted in support of an asylum claim were public and open to everybody. For those reasons, the appeal is dismissed.